Who would be out on a night like this? Llewellyn Watts. In the flesh? Fantastic. I've been searching for you for ages. My name is Dr. Aldous Hardy, professor of South American civilizations at Columbia University. Mrs. Pym. And I'll see myself out. And what can I do for you? I'm searching for the lost treasure of Lima. Well, it's not here. No, no, it's... Oh, <laughs> very good. <laughs> and what exactly is this treasure? Right. <clears throat> In 1820, the Catholic Church loaded all of its ink and gold and jewels onto a ship bound for Mexico. The Peruvian War of Independence was brewing, and they wanted to keep their riches safe. But they weren't. <laughs> Precisely. Huh. Captain William Thompson turned pirate, took the treasure, fled to Canada, buried the treasure, and entrusted the map to his sister. This is all interesting, but what does it have to do with me? Well, she married Elmore Wattenberg. And though the map was lost, an heirloom has been passed down. Wattenberg, that was my family name. Captain Thompson is your great-granduncle. And I found Thompson's map. Huh? The X marks the spot? Uh, 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 no. <laughs> As a good friend of mine wisely says, X never marks the spot. No, look here. Be on time. Your father ever give you an heirloom? Perchance a watch? Uh, as a matter of fact, he did. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, bring it out, man. Let's have a look at it. That watch is the key to finding the treasure. He gave it to me before he died a long time ago. Might take me a while to locate it. Oh. No, that's a shame. Why don't we meet tomorrow morning? I'll look for the watch, and if I find it, I'll bring it. Scott's Diner, 9 o'clock. Scott's Diner, 9 o'clock. Oh, wow. Uh... Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. But I waited for an hour and he never showed up. You believe he was telling the truth? I contacted Columbia University. He is indeed Dr. Hardy. Interesting. Good morning, gentlemen. Miss Hart, what do you have for us? Male, approximately 55 years of age, was found in his room at the Hoyson Hotel earlier this morning. Why weren't we called in? It was believed to have been an accident, but Miss Hart feels differently. Well, that explains why he never joined me. This is Dr. Hardy? Yes, that's the name that he gave the hotel. Were any of his belongings brought in with him? Just his suitcase. I put it over there. Have you ascertained the cause of death, Miss Hart? One single blow to the head. I believe the time of death was around 5 o'clock this morning. It's missing. The map Dr. Hardy had last night isn't here. Perhaps he was killed for it? It seems someone else is after the treasure of Lima. And now they have the map and know where to find it. Well, not without this. My father told me to never fix the watch and that maybe I'd understand one day. I always thought it was some kind of metaphor. Oh. There appears to be a second face underneath the top one here. But the numbers aren't sequential. But please put that down. I've been working to refine that device. It's not very accurate at long range, but at short range, it's terribly effective. I found a map of Ontario in 1820. What do you need it for? Ink and gold. <laughs> You're crackers. What, do you think the Incans came up here on a field trip? No, but perhaps pirates did. There is nothing in Ontario apart from rocks. And more rocks. And treasure. Could be. Right there. On top of a mountain north of Sudbury. Ink and gold. <laughs> Longitude and latitude. I beg your pardon? The numbers on the watch face could be map coordinates. 
Three, three, seven, eight. Well, that would be right about there. It's close to the first spot. The treasure could be deep in a hill there, in a cave. The point is moot, gentlemen. If Dr. Hardy's killer has this map and is also a treasure hunter, then he'll be going here. So that's where you're headed, then? Yes to catch the killer. But I think we are the only ones who know the coordinates hidden in the watch. This could be the true location of the treasure. This isn't a treasure hunt, Watts. We're looking for a killer. But treasure could be involved, and we could find it. Consider it a two birds, one stone proposition. Well, gentlemen, happy hunting. Maybe you'll bring back a ghost, or maybe even a leprechaun. along the road. See anything under there? I didn't see a large bolt, if that's what you're asking. It must have dropped out a while back. How did that happen? Could be a number of possibilities. General wear or... Sabotage. Hello there. Looks like you could use a hand. We lost the kingpin. Ah. Hell of a thing. Where are you headed? Well... Lady Evelyn Lake. We hear the fishing's quite good there. Ah. You heard right. Name's Leopold Hudson. William Murdoch, Llewellyn Watts. Do you live around here? Oh, I live wherever the wind takes me. I'm bound by nothing and no one. Sounds like a good life. <laughs> I know a place where you can spend the night. Just a half mile walk up this way. Follow me. Thank you. Yeah. Come on. You didn't tell him we're policemen. Well, it's possible there are things he didn't tell us either. Let's unhook the horse. Come in. Inspector. Oh. Have you seen Detective Murdoch? Uh, I have the post-mortem results for Dr. Aldous Hardy. Uh, Murdoch's out in the field today hunting his killer. Can I be of use? I told Detective Murdoch that Dr. Hardy died from a blow to the head. But you found he didn't. Before the blow, he was poisoned. With what? I'm having trouble identifying it. I do need to conduct some more tests. I don't know much about poisons. Look, uh, it's deadly dull around here today. Do you mind if I sit in? I could have a nice cup of tea while you cut your cadaver. Ah, certainly. I do have some Red E coffee. It's an instant powder, and it's all the rage. Well, let's see if instant coffee trumps deep tea, shall we? After you. We've secured two rooms for the night, and they found us another horse. Ooh, very good. You two can be off on your fishing trip. Mr. Hudson, why don't you tell us why you're really out here? Sure. Why not? What if I told you there was ink and gold buried somewhere near here? We would be inclined to believe you. All right, I suppose you have a map to lead you to this gold? My friend does. He's in Toronto. What might your friend's name be? Professor Hardy, but I call him Doc. I'm sorry, Mr. Hudson. We have some bad news about your friend. Dr. Hardy was killed two days ago. And how would you know that? Mr. Hudson, please sit down. I'm Detective William Murdoch. This is Detective Llewellyn Watts of the Toronto Constabulary. We are searching for Dr. Hardy's killer. Did you find the map with Doc? I saw it before he died. He was looking for something and came to me for help. Obviously, the killer stole the map from Dr. Hardy. And we assume he'll be headed to the marked location. But X never marks the spot. <laughs> Doc said there was something else on the map, some kind of clue. Let's hope they don't know that. Doc didn't deserve that. He was a good man. I'm handy in the woods if you need help. 
We'll take you up on it. Well, it's been a good long week since I've been on the road. I think I'll go wash away the grime. Do you think he had something to do with the death of Dr. Hardy? I'm not sure. But I'd prefer to keep him in my sights until I am. Ah. I saw that your husband's old restaurant had closed down. Oh, I never liked the food there anyway. <laughs> Is this that new instant stuff? It is. Hmm. Oh, I tell you what, you can't beat a cup of good old Yorkshire tea. <laughs> Any luck? We've narrowed it down to an organic compound similar to strychnine, but different. Strychnine is easily found anywhere. Not sure that's quite a good enough lead. Oh, I know what this is. It's called curare. It's a paralyzing agent from South America. Are you sure? What have you done to me? You can't move. I did say it was 99% pure. The one remaining percent was curare, and your lack of mobility. Have you seen this poison before? Yes, once. But I know there's only one man in Toronto who has access to it. Well, we'll have to have a word with him. Indeed. You think they have a Bordeaux in this place? <laughs> I very much doubt that. Miranda. I'm not surprised to see you here, Hudson, but I thought you worked alone. Oh, this is William and Llewellyn. They're on a fishing trip. Is that what you call it now? <laughs> this is Dr. Wilkes, sent over from my museum. I've heard a lot about you, Mr. Hudson. Oh, is that right? <laughs> Dr. Feckett is from the Oxford Museum, expanding your South American collection. Precisely. Leopold has been regaling us with tales of ink and gold. I hope you're not getting any ideas. <laughs> Miranda is of the mind that all artifacts should be in a museum, specifically her museum. Shouldn't all artifacts be in a museum? Perhaps we should ask the people they were taken from. You wouldn't have Thompson's map to the treasure, would you? Thompson didn't act alone when he turned pirate. Hmm. His mate John Wilhelm marked his own map, and I managed to track it down. Could we see this map? So you can lift the treasure out from under me? I don't think so. Do you think she really has her own map, or does she have Dr. Hardy's? Why don't you two be honest with me? Why did Doc show you the map? There's something you're not telling me. We're here to bring a killer back to Toronto. That's it. I sure hope so. We'll see you folks in the morning. You think he knows about the watch? Hard to say. But let's keep that between us for now. That's probably wise. Certainly will be an early morning. I don't think I'll stay for a bit. This wine is surprisingly passable. Suit yourself. like your partner is trying to get a head start. Detective Watts is very particular. He wouldn't leave without his belongings. So you're saying he didn't go willingly. No one saw Detective Watts leave last night, much less who he was with. I'm telling you, it's gold fever. He wants the gold, and he wants it all to himself. He's not like that. Shoot me straight. How did he see Doc's map? Dr. Hardy came to see Detective Watts the night before he was killed. Why? Apparently, Detective Watts is the last known relative of Captain Thompson, and he has a family heirloom that is the key to the precise location of the treasure. Well, maybe somebody else knew about this heirloom and has taken him to find it. We'll beat the bushes to find him. You will not 
The Sand Hill Cranes pass by here for only a brief time. You cannot disturb them. Are you bird watchers? I prefer amateur ornithologist. Is that so? Then where is your shotgun? I'm a devotee of Edmund Salus. I would rather capture them with silver iodine and collodion than slaughter them. Lay down the gun and take up a pair of opera glasses. Precisely. Were you engaged in this pastime earlier today? We were, but we were greatly disturbed by the appearance of a disheveled man and his companion. Can you describe the companion? A bald crown, eyes like an eagle's. Jorg Holmstrom, amoral and ruthless treasure hunter, your friend is in grave danger. Well, that's mine. It's mine now. Who are you? Jorg Holstrom. You may have heard of me. No. The Forbidden Palace Jewels? Ah. Still no. You will know of me when I find the treasure of Lima. Do you have Dr. Hardy's map? Dr. Hardy was here. I am on the right track. He was killed for that map. I haven't seen Hardy since... Santa Rosa. Why should I believe you? It doesn't matter to me if you do. What matters is if someone killed Hardy for that map, we're not the only ones looking for the treasure. Hmm. Well, I... Oh, all right, all right. Thanks for the watch. <laughs> <laughs> I should have kept on my own trail. Holstrom would be just after me. I've known Detective Watts to get out of far worse before. I'm telling you, gold does things to a man. Watts, are you all right? Uh, all things considering. What happened? I was taken at gunpoint last night by a man named Holstrom, but I escaped. Did you tell him anything? I didn't tell him anything. He knocked me out and took my watch. Was that the heirloom you told me about? It has the precise coordinates of the treasure written on its face. So you are looking for the treasure after all. We're looking for the man who killed Dr. Hardy. Well, then lucky for us, they'll likely be in the same place. Do you recall the coordinates? I do. <laughs> we continue due north for about an hour. <laughs> Shall we? How do you know this, Mr. Coffrey? Well, I made a personal study of certain toxins. Mr. Coffrey was amenable in private sales. So you bought some of this curare from him before? Uh, this must be it. There he is. Mr. John Coffrey. I'm Inspector Thomas Brackenreed of the Toronto Constabulary. And this is Miss Violet Hart. Yes, we've met. I'm not sure we did. Oh, come now, Mr. Coffrey. I'm not interested in your side dealings with the university's materials. Someone in Toronto used curare on an individual recently, and I need a name. Curare. That's unusual stuff. Who did you sell it to? The last person I sold any to was you, Miss Hart. About two years ago. And now that poison is in a dead man's body. And you are the only known supplier. I don't like what you're implying. You could be implicated in a murder. Where were you the day before last at five o'clock in the morning? Sleeping in my bed. My wife can attest to that. Well, if you remember anything else, pop down to Station House 4 and have a word with me. Good day, Mr. Coffrey. There, to the left. Must be it. I don't see Holstrom anywhere. Perhaps we've beat him to it. Or perhaps he's already inside. Let's find out. I think we're gonna have to crawl in. There aren't any dangerous snakes in Ontario, are there? The Massasauga Rattler. 
be very careful. Wonderful. I see something. Oh. oh, very good. It's an entrance. Good God! It would appear we aren't the first to come looking. Consider. I don't think he heard you. <clears throat> oh. Another poor unfortunate. Over here. Looks like there's an opening here. Oh, snakes. Ah, uh, allow me. I've been bitten by everything that crawls and flies. of treasure trove. Is that writing on the base? Yes, it looks vaguely amaranth. I learned a little in Bolivia. Well, let me see. I've made a study of linguistics. If we can decipher it... It'll lead us to the treasure. We yes. are getting out of here now. Musa! 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 What happened? I don't know. I was working and then I was hit from behind. Did you see who hit you? No. What was Gail? Oh. My post-mortem report for Dr. Hardy was right here. Now it's gone. Cold storage door is open. Dr. Hardy's body is missing. It must be that Mr. Coffrey. Perhaps. But he didn't kill Hardy. I checked Mr. Coffrey's alibi. He was definitely home the night that Hardy was killed. But he would still be worried that there was proof that he sold Carrari to a murderer. Well, are you sure you're all right? Uh, I'll be fine. Let's get you sat down with a nice cup of tea. Uh... Oh, no. The rope. It's gone. Hello, Leopold. I haven't seen you in a while. Damn you, Holstrom. Throw down the rope! Gladly. Once you give me the treasure. No! You still have that man? I would never just hand it over to you. Yes. Hold him. Please. Can I see it, please? Oh, of course. Do you really want to do this? Leave us down here to rot? That's your choice, not mine. All right, fine. You can have this, but throw down the rope. No, a sensible man. Here. Catch. You've got the figurine, now throw down the rope. Of course. Until next time, Leopold. <laughs> Whoa. 
Well, I suppose we should have seen that coming. I did. Look. Holstrom just gave us our way out. I should have shot that man when I had the chance. What good would that have done? We'd still have that figurine, for one. Oh. You brought your capacitor. Watts, be careful. Right, right, come. Here. Why'd you bring it on our expedition? This is not an expert. I thought I might have time to work on it. But as it turns out, it may just be the thing that helped get us out of here. No, Margaret, I can't do that right now. I've already told you, both my detectives are out searching for treasure. That's why. And I'm practically manning the station house on my bloody own. Look, something's come up. I have to go. Bye-bye. Miss Hart. I may have found Dr. Hardy. Oh. Where did you find this? The High Park Sanatorium. The caretaker found human remains in the incinerator before he began his shift. Why do you think it's Hardy? The mandible is still intact. There are gold teeth on both sides, just like Dr. Hardy. Coffrey. He dosed Hardy. He knew where the body was. So he destroyed the evidence of his involvement. Fortunately for us, he failed. <laughs> there should be sufficient velocity to get this to the top of the cave. Any other ideas? Mr. Coffrey, what in a trip? What do you want? I want to arrest you for assault, theft, and desecration of a corpse. Oh, and uh, murder as well. I don't know what you're talking about. You stole the post-mortem report and Dr. Hardy's body. Now that I know what you're capable of, I'm beginning to think you killed Dr. Hardy. I didn't kill him. I never met the man. Well, when he was alive. As there's no other suspects, and you sought to destroy evidence, you're looking quite guilty. The idea is sound. It's just the execution that's lacking. All right, seventh time's the charm. Impressive. All right, who's first? <clears throat> Not you. You don't trust me? No. Probably a wise decision. Excuse me, gentlemen. I don't intend on being down here a moment longer than necessary. What if I were to tell you there was someone else? It might matter if it's the truth. I received a letter last week, Monday, I think. Someone wanted to buy a vial of curare. Enclosed $50 and an address I was to send it to. What was the address? If I give it to you, will you two leave me alone? We won't leave you alone, but at least you won't be dangling from the end of a noose. Now, after you. No sign of the horses that damn Holdstrom cut loose. They'll be miles ahead of us by now. With that figurine gone, we don't know where the treasure is hidden. I know. We're not here for treasure. <clears throat> Perhaps this will ease your disappointment. I took a pencil rubbing of the inscription. We just need to decipher it. Let me see. No. You are a most resourceful man. You should come on my next expedition. Leopold. What are you two doing here? Very much the same thing as you, I'd imagine. Roaming through the wild, hoping to stumble across the treasure of Lima? So it would seem. Have you had any luck? We would hardly tell you. Mind if we rest here a while? Suit yourself. Oh. 
they might be able to aid in the translation. But then they would also know the location of the treasure. As would we. We could use your assistance in a matter. What is it? This is the map that led us here. Where we found a figurine with that inscription at the bottom. Where's the figurine? A man named Holstrom took it. Jorg Holstrom is here? Do you two grave robbers show up everywhere? We're not grave robbers. We're searching for antiquities just like you. To sell to the highest bidder. Ah, let me see that. The language is Quechuan. Oh. Can you translate it? I think so. Over water, right of sunset. Over water could mean falls. There's falls about six miles from here. A right of sunset could mean to the south side of the falls. Anything else? The last sentence reads, within rock. Perhaps the treasure is hidden in a cave or in a rock cairn. Mm. And Holstrom has a head start. Only if he can read Quechuan. Well, <laughs> let's hope he can't. All right. We'll leave in the morning. Mm. How about now? It's too late. Why risk breaking our necks in the dark? We move out at dawn. Whiskey? You don't remember? I never touch the stuff. You're lost. I live off it. What? We could. They're gone, aren't they? Oh, yes. Leopold as well? I knew we shouldn't have trusted him. Six miles to the falls. Oh, my feet are in agony. Never had so many blisters. How much further? We've been walking for an hour and a half, and then these woods were covering a mile every 20 minutes. A short answer would suffice. About an hour. Perhaps to pass the time by more quickly, we could sing. Perhaps we won't. Landed on the south side of the falls. Look for a rock formation. We might be on the wrong side. Dan, it's Holstrom on the north side. Dr. Wilkes must have mistranslated the inscription. By mistake or on purpose? Good lord. He's been shot. Can you see anyone? No. Watts, we need to get to the other side. The river narrows just a ways back. How far back? About a mile and a half. And you are sure this is a two-man job? Treasure anywhere. Who do you think did this? The only person I saw with a weapon was Leopold Hudson. 
Dr. Feckett and Dr. Wilkes could have a gun as well. They could have worked together. Won't find out sitting here. Oh. We'll come back for holster later. Let's get back to Toronto. Let's go. Hey, I... Ah, Murdoch. Miss Hart found poison in Dr. Hardy's body. We managed to identify the poison and find the man who supplied it to the killer. Very good. That man gave us an address to a post office box registered to one Dr. Wilkes. Wilkes? You know him? He told me he was from the Oxford Museum, but given this information, I doubt it was true. Well, we'll find him. A another man was killed while we were out there, a Jorg Holstrom. So we're now looking for two additional suspects, a Dr. Feketa and a Leopold Hudson. I'll get every available man on it. Thank you. Mr. Hudson, I have half my men out looking for you. I have a lot to tell you, William. Oh. Why don't you start by telling me why you left Detective Watson and myself at the campsite? I woke up in the middle of the night. And Feketa and Wilkes had already left. I followed them. You didn't wake us. Well, I thought it would be too dangerous. And I was right. Holstrom was shot right in front of my eyes. What happened? I saw Dr. Wilkes shoot him. I couldn't see Dr. Feketa anywhere. I took off after Wilkes, but he got away. You must believe me. My coroner has just telephoned me to tell me that the bullet that killed Mr. Holstrom came from a 1910 Glacenti, not your Browning. <clears throat> what happened after you chased Wilkes? I lost him. I... He must have doubled back and found the treasure off Holstrom. Then you came back to Toronto. Well, I found Miranda. And she called the museum, and they didn't send Wilkes. He's a fraud. I've been informed that it was likely Dr. Wilkes that killed Dr. Hardy. What can I do to help? I have an alert out for Dr. Wilkes, but I also need to speak with Dr. Feketa. Of course. I'll bring her in. We have a lead on Dr. Wilkes. Right. I heard you found Dr. Wilkes. Yes, and here he is. Oh. With a bullet to the chest. And you saw no one come in or out of this room? No, no one. No sign of the treasure? You don't think Leopold had any part in this, do you? Well, he is a treasure hunter after all. Two people were drinking whiskey. Yes. Whiskey. Sir, where is your telephone? Oh, right this way. Station house number four, please. Yes, this is Detective Murdoch. Listen to me very carefully. Oh, hello. I see you found your previously disheveled friend. What? Uh, yes, yes. Where are you off to now? The high Arctic. I hope to capture the Arctic turn. On film, of course. Well, safe travels. Dr. Miranda Feketa, where is your travel companion? Hardly a companion. He was a fraud and a thief. Birds of a feather, so it would seem. What are you insinuating? Dr. Emmett Wilkes was found dead just a few hours ago. And the stolen treasure? Missing. I, I can't believe it. Did Leopold kill him? Were you hoping to make it look like Leopold had been there? Or don't you remember? Whiskey? I never touched this stuff. He doesn't drink whiskey. No, but you do. You found Dr. Wilkes and the Incan treasure. And killed him. Likely killed Dr. Hardy as well. I had nothing to do with Hardy. That was Wilkes. Miranda, how could you? He was going to melt it for money. I had to. You are under arrest. <laughs> 
Thank you. You're welcome. Though I will not be doing your job for you in future, sir. Right. <sighs> Dr. Fekita, you're coming with me to the station house. It's been a pleasure, Leopold. The pleasure's all mine. Maybe I'll stop by Toronto again sometime. <laughs> oh. Thought it seemed a little lighter. Not exactly ink and treasure now, is it? Leopold must have switched the suitcases when we weren't looking. And the lost treasure of Lima is once again lost. Morning, Watts. Good for some. Just arranged for Holstrom's remains to be sent to his people in California. He lived a dangerous life. And an exciting one. Like Leopold Hudson, bound by nothing and no one. Yes, have you heard anything about Leopold Hudson? Not a thing. He was a charming enough man. Hard to believe he was a thief. All treasure hunters are thieves in their own right. Oh? How so? They steal precious artifacts for their own gain. It hardly matters if they end up in a museum or a private collection. But. Seems a progressive opinion. Morning Post. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's postmarked from Peru. Take a look at this. That's the ink and figurine from the cave. Leopold is a surprising man. I have a postcard from Peru. Apologies for the deception. I took the case to Lima, where I gave the treasure to its rightful owners. It doesn't belong in a museum. Until next time, Leopold Hudson. Well, it appears I'm not the only progressive thinker in this case. Hmm.
Thank you.